Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Supreme Master Television's fifth anniversary. Please welcome Ed Bagley Jr. and Elaine Hendricks. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to Supreme Master Television's fifth anniversary celebration. We're broadcasting live right now. We are delighted to have you here today as we celebrate this global channel based in Los Angeles and their five years of constructive programs for a peaceful world. And for a cleaner planet. Yes. So welcome, everyone. Welcome. I'm Elaine Hendricks and this gentleman <clears throat> whom we all know and love is Ed Begley Jr. Indeed. A six-time Emmy Award nominee, he's got his own acclaimed show, Living With Ed, co-starring with his lovely wife, Rochelle. Many of you remember him as Dr. Victor Elrich from the long-running series, Saint Elsewhere. But you know, you can clap for Saint Elsewhere. Some people there go back to before there were talkies. Yes, you remember <laughs> that show. The old kinescopes, you've seen them. Uh, in color, too, if I remember. Yes, yes some okay, of them were in color. Yes. But you know, Ed is also famous for turning up at Hollywood events on his bicycle. Bike riders, we got bike riders out here. All right, you got some bike riders. That's what you'd call a celebrity green carpet. Ed Begley Jr. is known for his advice on going green, but he never preaches, and he walks the walk 100% with his low-carbon vegan diet. Okay, let's give him a round of applause for that. Thank you. And Elaine, you're a vegetarian yourself, are you not? I am, indeed. Good for the planet, it's good for animals. And it's good for your health. I have the pleasure of introducing now, tit for tat, my co-host and actress, Elaine Hendricks. Big hand for her. As you can see, she is beautiful inside and out. She's also brilliantly funny on Disney's The Parent Trap, Inspector Gadget 2, What the Bleep Do We Know, and Joan of Arcadia. I love those shows, big hand. Her greatest passion is off-screen working for the humane treatment of animals, rolling up her sleeves alongside local rescue groups. She says that acting is her livelihood and animals are her life. Elaine also believes in maintaining a healthy balance of workplace, spirituality, and shopping. Isn't she fabulous? Why, <laughs> thank you, Ed. And you know, Ed, uh, I like the theme of the talks you give across the country, and that's live simply so others can simply live. Well, I'm happy to say that also happened to be a message that Supreme Master Television supports all the time and through this event. Supreme Master Television does a responsible job as media. Now, we're pleased to have in the audience many VIP guests among us, including government dignitaries and celebrities. Most specifically, we are excited to have our guest of honor, Supreme Master Ching Hai. She is the inspiration of this television channel and fortunately is available to be part of our celebration. She will be watching the show via video link and will be joining us a little later today. We look forward to the opportunity to speak with her. Now, before we begin the entertainment program, we're going to invite a special speaker to the stage. We'd like to send a salute to Supreme Master Television on their anniversary. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome State Senator Curran Price of California and a representative of Supreme Master Television. Good afternoon. I'm State Senator Curran Price, and I bring you greetings from the 26th Senate District and from my colleagues in the California State Legislature. In the State Senate, I also have the pleasure and the honor of chairing the Joint Committee on the Arts. And so I support and I applaud events like this. And we're especially pleased to be here uh, this afternoon uh, to celebrate Supreme Master Television, real example of what entrepreneurship uh, and commitment and professionalism can mean. Uh, and the benefits. It's possible to do well and to do good. And so I'm just very pleased and excited on behalf of my colleagues uh, to present a accommodation and certificate of recognition to Supreme Master Television. Thank you very much. In honor of your fifth anniversary, thank you for your commitment to constructive news and programs that foster peace and promote healthy and green living. 
I wish you continued success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, State Senator Curran Price. Uh, and our wonderful representative, Supreme Master Television. Now I'd like to introduce Haley Marie Norman and Grant Alexander, our co-MCs of today's event. Hello, everyone. Please allow me to introduce uh, this lovely co-host of mine. This is Haley Marie Norman. Haley has had quite a career since she was a kid. She was chosen from thousands of young children to be the face of the African-American Barbie doll. Uh, you also may recognize her from the game show Deal or No Deal, where she was the enormously popular briefcase model number 25. <laughs> now a regular in Hollywood, she will always stop whatever she's doing to answer her fans on Twitter, particularly if they want to ask her cool questions about her vegan diet. And I have the pleasure of introducing my handsome co-host, Grant Alexander, who is a longtime vegetarian himself and so inspiring to me. And he's also the recipient of four Emmy nominations, plus the Soap Opera Digest Award. He's best known for starring as Philip Spaulding in Guiding Light. He's a true actor I really admire. Grant earns even more respect as an animal advocate who rescues animals at his own home with his equally awesome wife, Sherry Ramsey. And Sherry happens to be an attorney with the Humane Society of the United States. I'm clapping for my wife. My wife is the hero in our family. She's, she's out there every day stopping animal cruelty. And now, we'd like to ask Ed to come back on stage to introduce The Real Love Musical with vegetarian actress Kristen Bauer. The Real Love is special in so many ways, and here to help me tell more about it is my gorgeous co-host, Kristen Bauer. Thank you. Kristen Bauer Van Stratton is best known for her role as the bold and spicy Pam in the HBO hit series True Blood. Anybody ever watch that? Real life, Kristen is passionate about her role as a defender of animals. Having loved nature and animals all her life, she made it her personal mission to rescue them from exploitation, often teaming up with charities, and sometimes proudly joining forces with her wonderful husband, the South African musician, Aubrey Van Stratton. Now, Kristen is one plant-strong vegetarian, so anyone who dares to ever think about harming an animal had better watch out. <laughs> I'm happy to be here today. I think that both the event and the musical just have so much heart. I agree. And speaking of heart, the Real Love Musical was inspired by a true love story in Munich in the 70s. A young woman named Tan from Olak, which is Vietnam, and a handsome German doctor fell in love and are happily married. But soon, Tan must make a difficult decision to either hold on to her own blissful life or give it up for a higher calling, for a happiness that she could share with all of humankind. And Supreme Master Ching Hai's private, intimate poems that she wrote as she went through this experience breathe life into this new musical. We'll follow the main character. She travels all alone to India. The musical actually tells only part of the story. The entire story of Supreme Master Ching Hai and her journey in the Himalayas is truly a very interesting and long epic, more that could be told in one musical alone. The experiences in the story are basically true. They just show one person's journey in fulfilling a dream that we all have somewhere inside, a longing to know our true self and reconnect with God within us. Well, fortunately, nowadays, we don't have to travel far to find our inner treasure, because no matter where we are, we all have the divine spark of unconditional love within us, especially my dogs. <laughs> especially your dogs. <laughs> right, I don't know if I do sometimes, but I know no, my you dogs do. do. I know her. He does. <laughs> when Supreme Master Ching Hai sees your smiling faces, she sees gods and goddesses. And it's good for all of us to remember that we can be loving, kind, and compassionate and one of the ways that I try to do that is a vegetarian diet, which lends respect and peace to our fellow beings. Absolutely true. Big hand for that. With rare exceptions such as today's gathering, Supreme Master spends most of her days and nights meditating for world peace, trying to awaken people from within to return to their original loving self. 
She had vowed to do so years ago to contribute to world peace, and so it remains her single-minded wish till this very moment that one day soon we will all live in heaven on earth. That'd be amazing. <laughs> what we're about to see is just a glimpse of the incredible journey, the incredible saga that took place. The musical begins with a spectacular feature song performance with music by Tony and Emmy Award winner Don Pippen. The song will feature a handful of guest stars that you will surely recognize. I saw them backstage. You will recognize them. <laughs> In order of appearance, they are Broadway's Tony-winning legend, Betty Buckley. Wow. Uh, yep. <laughs> Oscar-winning Shirley Jones from Carousel and the Partridge Family. The charming soprano Lynn Wintersteller. Trent Kowalik is a Tony-winning star of Billy Elliot the Musical. Philippa Giordano, Italian pop classical star. Tony-winning Billy Elliot star Curl Coolish. Emmy-winning singer Faith Rivera. And noted theater and screen actor Tom Schmidt. And they'll be joined by the real love chorus and orchestra. And after that grand piece, the actual musical begins, starring Joanna Ampel, an award-winning actress. Yeah, big hand for Joanna, come on. <laughs> a singer from London's West End, Tony nominee Adam Pascal, who was in the original cast of Rent. Adam. They're joined by Tony Award winner Daisy Egan, Tony Award winner Katie Huffman, and Tony nominee Robert Torty. It's an impressive cast, and you're also going to spot Dick Van Patten playing Tan's in-law. Now, these are some incredible voices we'll be hearing this afternoon, along with some great dancing and live music by the 20-piece orchestra. Right down here, these wonderful musicians. <laughs> and Kristen, the songs, I'm told, are absolutely gorgeous, just like you. <laughs> oh, Ed. Um, I met Ed in one of my first acting jobs. This is so awesome for me and to be here. she's still speaking to me. <laughs> Extraordinary. Five great American composers that have contributed to the music for the real love after being inspired by Supreme Master Ching Hai and her example of compassion. And at this point, we would like to invite the composers to stand. Ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished composers of the real love musical are two-time Oscar winner Al Kasha. Right there, Al Kasha. <laughs> Emmy nominee, Doug Katsaros. Doug, thank Doug. you for coming. Thank you, Doug. Tony and Emmy winner, Don Pippen, please stand. A man I know and love, Oscar and two-time Grammy winner, David Shire, please say hello. A man I greatly revere also, Oscar, five-time Emmy winner, Bill Conti, is not able to be present, conveyed his well wishes. He's not here, but we love him. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, without further ado, please enjoy the world premiere of The Real Love.
we tell at the Buddha's gate or to St. Peter all the stuff we did on earth to bring pain and to suffer. Oh, dear man! Let me tell you something. Just go and hang yourself on the hammock. Between the shadowing coconut, graceful tall trees. Enjoy some cake and tea. What is the mark of the chosen? Is, is it, it just the blood stain on your hands? Be it from animals or men. My dear brothers, I wanted to write you a long, loving letter.
<clears throat> Munich Red Cross, Elsa speaking. How may I direct your call? Oh, I see. Well, I could definitely tell you how you can get more involved with our humanitarian work, doctor. <laughs> well, actually, it might be better if you just came down and picked up the literature yourself. <laughs> We're at 127 Hegelstrasse. Oh, your wife is in the area? Never mind, I'll mail them to you. Where's Todd? <clears throat> oh, who knows? Well, then here, you can start on these. Oh, good lord. New arrivals, Vietnamese mostly. <laughs> More about people. Dozens of them. All right, Bright Eyes, you got any bright ideas what we're gonna do with your new friends? It is done. I have reorganized three storage rooms, found space for three dozen bunk beds. Oh, you're astounding. What exactly is her official job description around here? Interpreter, and that is it. Sometimes I think she's running for Director General of the International Red Cross. Oh, no, that's not true. I just want to be helpful. These refugees have lost everything. If I hadn't left Vietnam to study abroad by sheer chance and good luck, I could have been one of them, do you mm. see? Hey, do you Thank want you. some tea? It's chrysanthemum, that stuff you gave me. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. So what's next for you today? Escorting refugees to the hospital, picking them up in the afternoon. Oh, why don't you pick me up one of those cute doctors while you're at it? <laughs> oh, my poem! So, did he like it? Oh, not exactly. And by the way, you're fired. What? As a ghostwriter, you make an excellent vegetarian chef. <laughs> Your poem was so sweet, he did not believe for a minute that I could have written it. Slightly humiliated, I admitted that it was yours, and now he wants to meet you. Oh, Elsa, I knew this was a bad idea from the beginning. No, 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 no. I need a new one for a new prospect, a poem that sounds just like me. All right, let me see what I have. <clears throat> Here's one. If there wasn't you in life, where to would I have gone? Maybe to a monastery. But there I must be so lonely, like a nun without a monk. A nun? <laughs> Me? Come on, be serious. Sorry, love. Try me again tomorrow. What was his name, anyway? Which one? You know, your would-be doctor or husband benefactor? Uh, Rolf Reinhardt, chief of epidemiology. Aiming high. Yeah, you know, I got a thing for powerful men, Ton, and the powerful Mercedes 450 SLs, they tend to drive. <laughs> but I am done with doctors, they are too busy for me. I've moved on to Heinrich, the high financier. <laughs> Aw, Elsa, you and your obsession with men. It all seems beside the point to me. Beside the point? Oh, you could have any man you wanted with that gorgeous face and that huge heart of yours. Well, maybe that's just my problem. What can I do with my heart? This little heart of mine. So little and so fine. This little heart of mine. me so much daily with every misfortune I see what can I do for the people what can I do for the world always full of trouble always full of sorrow what can I do with my heart this drive me absolutely crazy. You want to take care of the whole world, but you won't let someone take care of you. But Tom, they're asking for you in the barracks. Thank you. Oh, oh. Tomorrow, <laughs> a poem that sounds exactly like you. Wasafa, <laughs> 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 
about your leg? Oh, thanks to you so much better. Would you like to dance? I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh. oh, careful. Oh, yes. You okay? Yes, sorry. <sighs> Thank you. Tom, Tom, this is the little girl. Hey, sweetheart. Why are you trembling, dear? I have dreams. Bad ones. Nightmares. Oh, you're safe here, sweetheart. Ton, what did we do so wrong to deserve this? Is it karma? Sometimes we cannot find the reason for everything that happens. Yeah, what will happen next? I don't know. But we are going to enroll you all in school, and you can be anything you want to be. I want to be a teacher. You'll be a wonderful teacher. <coughs> but for now, you need to rest. Just rest. She was a sole survivor of her boat. Father, mother, older brother, all killed before her eyes. Pirates, barbarians, club and knife the men, <coughs> rape the women, throw the babies overboard. Giant waves crashing down, 140 people hurled into the sea. I hung to a splinter of wood. God knows what happened to the others. But you were lucky, because when my cousin came out of the water, his legs were eaten off by sharks. Oh, dear God. What can I do? If there is anything I can do to help them relieve of their suffering, I vow to help. My dear friends, in this new place you will find stability to reinvent your lives. And always remember that we will have the memory of our beautiful homeland to revisit in our hearts. My sweet sister, do you ever dream about yellow apricot blossoms by the terrace in past springs? I now win the west, so far away, missing all very much in my heart. Tom, let's get some coconuts after school. Yes, my mom gave me money. My treat. <laughs> We're so happy. Beside a bowl of spinach soup and lullabies, melody us as the rhythm of the swinging hammer. Oh, how I miss the thatched house of old. Mother hair graying, gentle as the cool shade of coconut grove. Your essay, Tan, is excellent. Very perceptive. Thank you, Teacher Bin. If it is good, it is entirely thanks to your excellent instruction. And sisters and brothers in the fragrant rice field and past adolescent love like a sad refrain. All swept away by the bloody river of war, dissolved in that evening of chaos.
teacher, sweet and gentle, as the old plum tree in the village. A bullet had punctured his heart. Bright blood flowed heedlessly soaking the grass. Soft green blades turned to red mass. She was barely 18 in years. To the newlyweds, neighbors had just said cheers. Soon, a promise of a new life to cherish. Mother and child both now perished. Two innocent souls, one straying bullet. On the riverbank, bodies decompose. Where will their drifting souls go? All swept away by the bloody river of war, dissolved in that evening of chaos long ago. Tom, come quickly. She limp as a rag, and she has a terrible fever. I'm taking her to the hospital. Come with me. Dr. Forrest, dial 118, please. Dr. Forrest. Please dial 118. Nurse, I'm experiencing major resistance from patient Steinmetz on the ninth floor vis-a-vis -vis his post-op dietary needs. Steinmetz, ninth floor? Affirmative. I've ordered high fiber, high protein, maximum roughage. This man needs to regain his strength. Oh, let me look. But Dr. Burkhoff, Dr. Reinhardt specifically ordered sorbet and water for Steinmetz because of his gallstone procedure. It makes sense since ninth floor is pre-op. It's Steinberg on the 11th floor. That's post-op that needs high cal roughage. Let me see that. Okay. Well then, mistakes can happen, granted. However, I must say that sorbet and water is not sufficient nutrition Excuse for Excuse me, person if I may interject. Mr. Steinmetz, Dr. Berghoff, is in fact my patient, which means I am responsible for him including his diet before a serious procedure. Yes, but as the dietitian for the Sorry to interrupt you again, but Mr. Steinberg, on the 11th floor, he's also my patient. And I'm getting concerned about his nutritional status by now. Oh, that's my job. Thank you, got it, okay. Help, please. I need to see a doctor right away. Yes, what is it? She's burning with fever. You know, she may be suffering from calcium magnesium depletion. Is she consuming sufficient quantities of dolomite? Would you please resume your duties, Dr. Berghoff? Thank you anyway, Klaus. Take a deep breath. Okay. 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 Nurse, admit this child. Children's care intensive. I want a full workup and let me know the vitals. Yes, doctor. She'll be fine, I promise. Ton, I have a ringing toothache. Oh, yes, you poor man. Doctor, can the hospital refer us to a good dentist? Yes, I'll take care of that. Really? Well, you did ask for a good dentist, didn't you? That'd be me. Uh, you're not a... An MD? Of course I am, but I'm... Ooh. But I'm also a dentist. And in my vast spare time after that, I'm chief of epidemiology nurse. I'll see this man momentarily in room four, please. You're Dr. Reinhardt. Guilty as charged, Ralph Reinhardt. Have we met? No, but Elsa Mannheim is my very best friend in Germany. Ah, yes. Elsa and I had dinner recently. I still don't know your name. My name is Tan. Tan, it's a pleasure to meet you. If I remember correctly, Elsa had a poem that was written by her best friend. That would be you? I'm afraid so. So, Elsa has wonderful things to say about your work methods, and I would very much like to discuss with you the refugee problem here in Germany. I would welcome the chance to speak with you, Doctor. Excellent. Have dinner with me tonight. Tonight? Uh, forgive me. It would be an honor if you would be available for dinner tonight. Might you be available? I think I would. I should tell you, it's my birthday. Mine too! Really? Yeah. Well, then we have to go someplace special. I should tell you I'm vegetarian. But fear not, I know where to get the best baba ganoush in all of Europe. Excellent. I'll pick you up at 7.30 at the Red Cross. All right then, doctor. I am very heartened to know that you're as concerned as I am about the refugee situation. Carla! Yes, doctor? What time is my last appointment? Seven o'clock. Cancel it. Cancel it? My world has just been turned upside down. It isn't the lovely kingdom. It is someone here I could love. My heart wouldn't be here if she were not. Maybe it's the way that she smiles. Maybe it's the joy. 
Dessert. No, thank you. I couldn't. Thank you, Ferdinand. Oh, and Ferdinand, everything was delicious. Ah. <laughs> so, did you like your food? Isn't it interesting? Well, I have to admit, to be honest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why so reluctant to say so? Is it only because it's new, different, not what you're used to? Good point. I mean, I find you new. I'm different. I'm quite frankly very interesting. Dr. Reinhardt. Please call me Ralph. I hear Dr. Reinhardt in the hospital 18 hours a day. All right. Rolf. One last thing about the refugees. Imagine if you can being suddenly without your culture, your village When entire... do I get to hear more about you? We must remember that if we are to help Tan, properly... forgive me, but I fear that you've taken on too much. My heart breaks for what has happened to your people, but you, no one person can save them all. It's impossible. But I must try. Of course you must try. But your methodology is doomed to fail. There just, there aren't enough hours in the day. I fear that you will become a burned out woman in six months. You have to learn to simply let go. But the love I feel for them cannot possibly burn out. I know I cannot restore everything that is lost, but their souls survive. You're a doctor, you, you must know what I'm talking about. I'm in the business of healing bodies, Tom. I can't even begin to wonder what happens to their souls. Forgive me, but that sounds a little heartless. And I do not believe in any way that you're a completely heartless man. I saw it today with little Lynn. I'm a scientist, a realist. And you're a woman of what? Faith? Yes, of faith, the heart, scientists. Why can't you just let the head and the heart combine into one? Because, Tan, don't you see? Science is heartless. The facts are what they are. I exchanged the church for medicine because faith alone never cured a kidney disease or even fixed a tooth. That little child that you brought in today. Lynn. Lynn. Supposing Lynn were very ill and there was just nothing we could do to save her. Well, sometimes sick and weak people die. You just simply have to come to accept it. No, I do not have to accept it. Thank you very much for dinner and a very stimulating conversation. Will you excuse me, please? It's time for me to go. Not so suddenly. I'm going back to the hospital. At this hour? The hour doesn't matter. I'm going to sit with Lynn. Uh, but she'll be asleep. All the more reason for me to be there. What if she wakes up and has no idea where she is? Uh, let me at least call you a taxi. No, thank you. I look forward to the walk. But it's freezing out, and look how dark it is. On the contrary, there's a full moon. You must not have noticed. Waiter. Uh, yes, sir. Check, please. Uh, yes, sir. But first, some baklava. No, thank you. Just a check. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but first, some lingonberry cider on the house. No, thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but first, uh, some advice. No. Advice? Uh, with your indulgence. Tan is an extraordinary woman. One in a thousand, perhaps one in many millions. And you are well matched. And she likes you. And you like her very much. And on what do you base that brilliant observation? Thirty-four years in the restaurant business, sir. Forgive me, Herr Doctor, but just now to let her go, a very foolish thing. Waiter. Yes, sir. Check, please. Yes, sir. And call me a very fast cab. Yes, sir.
She's sleeping. What are you doing here? Your very smart friend Ferdinand called me a very fast cab. But I still don't... Shh, shh, shh. I needed to see you again, Tan. Right away. You were right about Lynn. You were right, and I was wrong about all of it. I didn't mean to... Shh. is racing. <laughs> um, how long have you been experiencing these symptoms? They came on. Very suddenly. <laughs> a contagious condition. There's a cure, but it's risky. Come outside with me. <laughs> there, the moon. I thought you never noticed the moon. I didn't until I jumped in a taxi and I raced across town in the dark with my head hanging out the window looking for you. I needed the moon to help me see. Don't you see? Oh, I feel like I've known you since before the moon was even born. That long? Do you believe in reincarnation? Tonight, I only believe in love. smile only for me oh how happy no one to see no one to know our love for each other though you care for all though, though you, you care, care for all no one can smile so sweet and long you Still and hung above the mountain. You listened and danced till my heart's content, endearing and lovely. You are the beauty of the galaxy. You share the pain and the joy with me. Shine my path in the dark You soothe my heart when I'm in pain When I'm in pain Good heavens, where did that come from? This belonged to my grandmother. Right before she died, she made me promise that I would always carry this around with me in my left coat pocket on the outside chance that I might find her. Find who? The woman I want to marry. That's so romantic. I always thought it was utterly absurd. Until now.
difference from top to bottom. Don't you agree, Ernst? Yes, dear, very sweet. Top to bottom. <laughs> what, what are you doing? I'm not doing anything. What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. It's just Don and Rolf. They're so beautiful. They make me feel so happy. <laughs> oh, cake. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dr. and Mrs. Ralph Reinhardt. <laughs> Maestro. Now I can't help myself. Honey, we discussed this this morning and we both I know, agreed. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rolf, I. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're Rolf's parents and well, we promised we wouldn't embarrass him by giving silly speeches at his wedding. Yeah, but now it's too late. Uh, anyway, here goes. My son was always a loner, pursuing his real passion, medicine. He didn't have time for love. Until he met our darling Tom. Oh. Thank you. I'm sure Rolf has told you that love is an irrational thing. But now he's done the most irrational thing imaginable. He's gotten married. Yes, they say a man is not complete until he's married. Then he's finished. Oh, oh, you get it? I'm sorry. <laughs> Tom. Those of us who know and love Rolf see something new and warm and open in his face, especially when he looks at you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. All right, Mr. Comedy, you're on. Well, uh, did you hear the one about the proudest father in the world and the happiest father-in-law? Uh, what happened to the punchline? Oh, you want the punchline? Here's the punchline. <laughs> you to meet one of my best friends in the world. He works with me at the hospital. This is Rajiv and his lovely wife, Greta. You are the most radiant bride I have ever seen. Thank you. No, no, I mean it. Your eyes. There's a Mardi Gras going on behind your eyes. <laughs> really? <laughs> Greta, don't terrify the poor girl on her wedding day. My wife is an artist, Tan, a painter. She forgets to mention that before she launches into her rhapsodies over new faces. A real artist. I would be so honored if you would model for me. The honor would be mine. Ah, I have a feeling we are going to get on famously. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, you gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, no. oh my god, this wedding is beautiful. You are both beautiful. Just look at you. I wish you were wearing this dress. Oh, no, enough of that nonsense. You two are match made in heaven. Oh, you're just going to be so happy and share little secrets and joyfully climb the little ladder of life together, hand in hand. Oh. And every night when you come home from work, he'll be there waiting for you all tall and weary and handsome. <laughs> oh. And you'll see his stethoscope hanging on a little peg in the hallway and he'll say to you, hello, darling, and how was your day? Oh my God, I'm just so happy for you. I can't stand it. Darling, oh. sweetie, <laughs> time to throw the bouquet. Me, me, me. 
I'm ready. Bring it on. Dr. Kravitz, you have a visitor in the main lobby. Dr. Kravitz, a visitor in the main Nurse, lobby. Nurse, are you sure that Dr. Reinhardt and Ton are coming back to work today? That's what it says on the schedule, so it might be true. Well, you know, their honeymoon was officially over two days ago. And then there is that one day's travel from Lake Como, which would have been yesterday. Of course, one must not discount jet lag. Are you concerned at all about their jet lag? I'm nearly frantic about their jet lag. But somehow I am able to push that aside and soldier on with my tasks at hand. Yeah. I'm not so much concerned about Dr. Reinhardt. He wouldn't know a tropical parasite if it bit him. <laughs> if only. Baton. Oh, ta. <laughs> she's so delicate. Oh, even though I know she's really not. You know, she would have to have the strength of 20 women to survive what she's been through. Even so, I made her this cake. You what? Yeah, for jet lag and a, and a welcome back thingy. You know, it's, it's flourless celery and rutabaga with caramelized leek frosting. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Do you have any idea what they serve on airplanes these days? She must have been used to eating dreck. Klaus! I mean, Dr. Berghoff. No, I mean Klaus. I think you should back off a bit from the newlyweds. Agree at all? No. <sighs> well, frankly, no. I'm just trying to be, you know, friendly. Friendly is good. I tell you what. How about you meet me in the nurse's lounge after our next shift, and you can feed me some of that caramelized leek frosting? I'm gonna go put this in her locker. Klaus! I know, don't light the candles this time. Is anybody ever gonna forget that? You two, you need to go to the ENT doctor. <laughs> Nurse, could you escort them to the ENT? Sure, Tom, when you get a second, two more refugee buses have just arrived. Right my chest is burning and my head is killing me. I think I'm going to faint. Nurse, we need some help here. Tom, Tom, I need you. I don't understand a word this refugee is saying. Tom, when you get a chance, I've just come from the children's ward. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Yes. Your patient, Lynn. Is everything okay? Uh, she's fine, but she wants to see you. Oh, this is not a good moment. Tom, take a break. You deserve it. Go. Thank you, doctor. Why, hello! You're looking chipper! Why are you late? I beg your pardon? To class? Oh, to class! I'm very sorry, teacher, but my school bus driver got lost, you see, and we ended up in an entirely different country. What country? I'm not entirely sure, but it might have been Zanzibar. Is it far from here? Pretty far. And that explains why I am so late, you see. That's OK. But now you have to give the entire class an oral report on Zanzibar. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Zanzibar, 
an island nation founded 12 million years ago by a family of great blue whales. They love to spend their summers there frolicking in the cool mountain waterfalls. Whales don't frolic in waterfalls. You're just too smart for me. Hello, darling. Hey. Hello, Lynn. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Oh, I'm so glad you're feeling better today, sweetheart. Would you excuse Tom and me for one moment? She's growing stronger every day. Yes, it's wonderful, but she has a test result here that I'm not at all happy about. What is it? Tuberculosis. Fairly advanced and very contagious. I'm ordering her complete isolation. Isolation? She needs to get out in the sunshine, see other children, learn to forget what she's been through. Yes, Tom, that would be ideal, but this is a hospital, and there are other patients here that are at risk. Maybe she could live with us. No. That's completely inappropriate. She'll need constant monitoring. Will I be able to visit her? Yes, under highly restricted circumstances. I cannot let you get too close. Too close? I love her. You love her too, don't you? Of course I do. But I worry about your health, Tom. It's too risky. Risky? I grew up surrounded by war. I understand risk. There must be some sort of compromise for Lynn. No, there is no compromise in this instance. In all likelihood, Lynn will be fine. At which point you'll see that I was right. Come on, we're both exhausted. Let's drop the subject. I won't! I can't! Dr. Reinhardt, room 649, stat. Dr. Reinhardt, room 649. Rolf, I'm sorry. Let's not fight. I'm it's not looking the... for a second opinion, Tom. I'll see you tonight. Rolf! Dear Dr. Darling, in recognition of our two-day anniversary of not speaking to one another, a poem. I set out, spreading my wings to the heavens. I proceed to call on you, the one I cherish. The earth is vibrant, exulting in our reunion, an uncommon day of happiness, together as on our first meeting. Let us overlook the nights of our distress, Sing on full moon nights, chorus on breezy days. Life is an aromatic flower garden. Oh, mine. Oh, mine. Carla, find someone to cover my shift. I have a date with my wife, but she doesn't know it yet.
can't keep up with me. Woo! Ever try this one? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh. I'm sorry. I know not to take in vain the name Jesus or Buddha. Two very important men in your life, after me. They're not men, they're masters. I know, I know, your faith keeps you grounded. A higher power keeps all of us grounded. <laughs> well, gravity grounds me. Without faith, people fall. <laughs> Take a leap of faith with me! <laughs> I adore you, my magnificent man of science. And you enchant me, my poetical, passionate muse. Delicious or what? I can't believe I love my vegetables so much. My mother would be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Rajiv? Is she a keeper? Oh. oh, well, that rather depends, doesn't it? On what? On her feelings about you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me that. She's dying to marry me. Aren't you, oh. sugar cane? Oh, stop it. <laughs> You know, Tan is teaching me her cooking techniques. Oh. It's fascinating. She's a brilliant teacher. <laughs> With my bank account, she'd marry me if I was Quasimodo himself. <laughs> oh, Tan, we have to set a date for my next cooking lesson. I need to learn how to make that eggplant thingy. Oh, scrumptious. Oh, Elsie, you hmm? should come too. Thursday at 3? Oh, perfect. Oh, yeah. She's pretty. Dumb, but pretty. Oh. I, for one, do not find Miss Mannheim by any stretch of the imagination to be dumb, Heinrich. Thank you. <laughs> Don't get all women's lib on me. Women's lip, I like to call it. <laughs> I mean it like it's flattering. She's, she's pretty. Dumb, but pretty. Now, mind you, I could have a college graduate if I wanted one, but that's the trick, isn't it? Dumb, smart, skinny, fat, finding that perfect combination. And I like them dumb and pretty. Oh, um, Taj, I almost forgot. That book we talked about last week, I brought it for you. Wonderful! Lives of the Himalayan yogis. Is that Yogi Bear or Yogi Bearer? <laughs> yogis, Heinrich. Himalayan yogis. But really, nobody expects you to have ever heard of such a thing. Nope. Nobody expects you to be anything, darling, but the stupid vulgar, drunk, benighted boor that you obviously, disgustingly are. Hey, now. Hey, what kind of a thing is that to say? How dare you say stuff uh, like that to party's me. over. Good night, Heinrich. Good night, everyone. Heinrich, we're gonna send you back to your home in your nice, warm bed. He won't remember anything in the morning. Crazy. <laughs> Why don't you stay here with us tonight, Elsa? No, I think I need a little fresh air, but thanks. Tan. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, it's okay. I live through days of deception, professing love that I don't feel. Sweet utterances from rosy lips, passionate words from an ice-cold heart. I indulge in many illusions, day and night. Keeping up with the Joneses This ephemeral body burning with passion How I writhe, plunging into the fire I pass many shores, clear and muddy Washing my face, then painting it again Desiring Enjoy this life of abandoned 
many struggles I awake suddenly Asking myself, is that all there is? What does it matter if you extra tens of years Chasing gain with efforts so Confession today is this life or is death close by? So much stronger you'll feel in the morning if now you just go to sleep. So close your eyes, my darling. It's hard to breathe. I know, sweetheart. But just close your eyes and sleep will come. Miss Tan, when they died, where did my mother and father and big brother go? I don't know, sweetheart. But wherever it is, it's someplace very, very beautiful. Like Zanzibar? Maybe so. So just close your eyes, my darling, and dream about Zanzibar. How oh, I wish I had the answer for her. How oh, I wish had the answer to all the suffering in this life. I work, and I sleep, and I work some more, and always I am praying, putting the pain in my writing, giving my love to the children, the lost ones, every last one of them. But it isn't enough. Nothing changes the suffering. But dear God, Show me a sign you exist. Dear Buddha, let me see you. Let me know your compassion, your power, because I need strength, God. I need strength. Not for me, but for Lin. Why the endless suffering? Where is the everlasting remedy? I know in my heart there is one, but where is it? Won't you show me a sign?
I think we should stop for today. Why? What's going on? Nothing. Tan, it's my business to see things in people's faces. Something pretty serious is going on. Lynn isn't getting any better. In fact, she's getting worse. I'm so sorry. I'm scared she's going to die. Well, of course you are. I feel my faith is faltering. I feel lost. You know, ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a painter. Art was my enchantment. But it was only a dream. So I grew up, I got practical, and I went to med school because my father was a doctor, but also because medicine was important, unlike, say, art. I met Rajiv, we fell in love, we got married, and we both started practicing. But then a couple years later, this little voice started waking me up in the middle of the night telling me that I needed to be painting. I ignored that little voice, but it got louder, more adamant. And then one day I woke up and I knew, I simply knew that I had to go to Paris. Paris? What did you think of that, Rajiv? Absolutely opposed, hated the idea. <laughs> so he stayed home. But I had to honor something that felt bigger than myself, Tan, a spirit that little voice. I needed to go to Paris to study with the, the living masters of my art. Otherwise, I'd be betraying something in my soul. You were very brave to go. Honestly? Yes, I was. But let me tell you the best part. Yes, going to Paris, I became a better artist than I otherwise possibly could have been. But I became a better person. Tom, tell me what's wrong. I don't know. I'm not a painter like you. I'm... I don't know what I am. Well, you're a deeply spiritual woman. I know. I know it sounds blasphemous, but God and Buddha, they seem so far away. My country, Tan, India. India has been a crucible of suffering for centuries. We have struggled with your question more than most. Where is God in the midst of all this suffering? And? And perhaps because of that, a few, very few wise masters have learned the answers to that elusive question and, and live to enlighten others. Living masters? In India? I don't know if I will have the courage to go. You were very strong. I had the courage to take the first step. That's all I had. Search high and low for a little love. Search high and low for a little love. To bestow on all beings in all corners of existence. Tom, that was Rolf on the phone. He thinks perhaps you should meet him at the hospital. Is it Lynn? Yes, it's Lynn. Is everything okay? You should go. Go now, Tom.
I couldn't save her, Tom. I'm so sorry. No one blames you, darling. It almost felt like she were ours. Our own daughter. Yes. Let's start our own family, Tom. Let's have our very own child. That's a beautiful idea. There's something I need to tell you. I must go to India. India? Come with me. I feel it. It's my calling. I must go. You're not thinking clearly, Tan. The way to cope with Lin is to move ahead, not run away to India. This isn't running away. What is the meaning in her death, her suffering? I must find out. Come with me, Rolf. You spent ten years to become a physician. I'm only asking for two. No. My work. And I don't want you to go either. I need you here beside me. I need your blessings for this. You're asking for blessings from a man who has no faith. That's not true. You said you believe in the power of love. I believe in the power of my love for you. Then how about this? That God loves us all. That if we love each other as strongly as that, we can conquer anything, even disease. This is your path, Tom. It's not mine. But it's our lives. Oh, I love you, Tom. But my life is here. Then I must go alone. Please don't do this. I don't want to lose you. I have no choice. When you come home, there will only be grass and flowers greeting your footsteps. The garden sheds her evening dew. The house bows weighed down with loneliness. Murmuring farewell. Even if my heart was made of stone and my feelings all of brass, I would soften and melt as I feel the pain I love you. But, beloved one, I can no longer stay in darkness, surrendering to ignorance and misery. I know you've been suffering in golden bonds, longing to be free. This world of woe, where I must pine, and where you, my love, have to taste sorrow. Please lift your heart out of the blue web, so my mind will also be lightened when we are apart. You're leaving, reaching for heaven above, vowing to level out.
me, please. I need directions. And... How can I help you? <gasps> you are a pilgrim. You are observant. Um, I'm trying to find my way to Rishikesh. Do you know the way? And please, don't say straight ahead. It's the foothills of the Himalayas. I can show you the path on foot. It is that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful to you. Um, can I offer you something for your kind assistance? Are you in need of some kindling for your stove? Well, no, but then best to save for someone who does. Of course. I would like to offer you something, however. You will need this. No, I couldn't possibly. Thank you so much. I am going to call you Smiling Step. Smiling Step? <laughs> yes! If only you could see your face! <laughs> <laughs> so oh! Sorry. <laughs> she is of the Brahmin caste, my dear. Only those of the same caste are allowed to touch her. But how is one to know? Very difficult, Pilgrim. My advice? Not to touch anyone. <laughs> Thank you, Guruji. India is full of wonders and mysteries. Some dangerous, some not. <laughs> You are traveling alone? Yes. That I would categorize as dangerous. Well, it's just that I'm in a great hurry to get to the Himalayas. Ah, so it is enlightenment you seek. Yes, with every fiber of my soul. You want to learn to walk on water and fly in the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not looking for mystical powers. I want to help people, and I need enlightenment to know how best to do that. Oh, beware, young woman in a hurry. You cannot do this alone. You will need help. Uh, a friend, a guide. <laughs> For example, the Himalayas are bitterly cold. Have you learned do more heat? Well, no. I don't even know what that means. Generating warmth from the solar plexus. Uh, the only way to survive. <laughs> oh, I thought if I kept walking, the exercise would keep me warm. I have so much to learn. But my dear, do not make the mistake of falling into despair. I knew from the first moment I saw you, you were a special one. So many of my students are chasing physical attainments, not truly searching for the truth. I have traveled to every corner of India, learned with great masters and attained great enlightenment. Goodbye and good luck. Wait, Guruji, you said students. You are a teacher. I would very much like to learn your path. We welcome you. My temple is in the mountains on the other side of the river. Too far to walk. <laughs> I would gladly pay for your bus fare if you'd allow me. I accept. Come, let us begin our journey. <laughs> This is Dawn. Welcome her. <laughs> Forgive their rough manners, my child. They are overly stimulated from a long day of study and prayer. <laughs> Something to drink, food. <laughs> you are hungry? Famished, actually. 
excellent to, to nourish the soul. One must not neglect the body. But first, uh, a light repast, something cool to drink, uh, a little wine, perhaps. Just a cup of water will be perfect. A cup of water. <laughs> yeah, a cup of... Ah, yes, a cup of water. A cup of... My young sadhu, come here. Uh, for the young lady, it shall be a cup of water. But, 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 for her, it shall be a special uh, elixir of welcome. <laughs> yes, master. <laughs> Later, you shall have my room there in the back, and, uh, uh, and I shall sleep here with the others. I couldn't. I wouldn't want to. Uh, nonsense! 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 <laughs> Do your hair. Thank you. Ah, oh, I have so much to learn about you, my child. Your spiritual journey thus far. I want to know all about it. Hold nothing back. If I am to be your teacher, you must trust me. I have questions. Many, many questions.
Where? Where is she? <laughs> you idiots! Where is she going to wait? After her! <laughs> oh, dear God, what prey am I supposed to learn from that? For this, I left my warm and safe home. My beautiful and beloved husband. Oh, God, you know I put my faith in you. But where are you? Dawn. What? Dawn. Who's calling me? I'm over here. <gasps> it's Klaus. Klaus? Klaus Burgo. <gasps> this is the craziest miracle ever. <laughs> Running into you in India? Hundreds of thousands of square miles, hundreds of millions of people. What are the odds? Oh, shush! What are the odds? I mean, I've escaped from a bunch of dangerous conmen. She, she can't it. possibly have gone much further than this. Spread out, boys! Give me your coat. Oh, okay. You have binoculars, too? I don't need that. Okay. Okay, they're getting real close. We should... Tom. Where'd you go? Todd! I'm down here! Oh! oh. What's this? Another pilgrim no doubt? You! Idiot! Wake up! What? We are looking for a woman. Small. Attractive. In a hurry. Have you seen her? <laughs> no. Ah! <laughs> I'm in this! Heading that way. That way, boys! <laughs> <laughs> Are they gone? Not yet. I don't hear anything. Uh, okay, now they're gone. Klaus, you're my hero. You were brilliant. <laughs> oh, I was pretty good, wasn't I? Listen, yeah, are you all right? I'm fine. Um, Klaus, I think you just saved my life. <laughs> you know what? We got to get out of here. Yes, please, but where? Uh, there was an ashram not too far back, I think. You think? Yeah, well, maybe it was a little far back. You see, I've been on a bird watching expedition. Perhaps we can place. find them together. Oh, okay. I have to ask. I mean, it is a miracle you're here, but what on earth are you doing in India? Oh, uh. <laughs> same as you, Ton. I'm just broadening my circle of spiritual understanding. You know, when I got fired from the hospital in Munich, I thought to myself, well, this is not good. But then, I saw this as the opportunity that it could be. We gotta go. Okay. When you're there and I am here I miss your eyes ever sparkling Do you miss me, darling? Miss me, darling Longing for someone far away Living an empty life I miss your soft and beautiful lips Do you miss me, darling? Do you miss me, darling? The river continues flowing Indifferent The lonely rose bush is cheerless I dream of our glorious time together Holding a single pillow Seagulls are flying low Turn. The way this evening seems so distant Do you miss me, darling? Do you miss me, darling? 
but a touching scene. <laughs> a man, all alone, very late at night on a lonely bridge, singing pretty songs to the moon. <laughs> Hello, Elsa. You startled me. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought doctors were unflappable, but please, don't fly away like all the pigeons do whenever I come near. I'm actually grateful for the company. It's usually pretty empty out here. You come here often? Uh, lately, I do. I see. You miss her terribly, don't you? What have you heard? Has she written to you? A note from the airport saying she arrived safely. I'm sure she misses hearing from you. My life here is so much the same. Nothing significant to report in any case. Except for the terrible loneliness, Rolf. Especially late at night. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wait till my therapist hears about this. Oh, boy. Oh, it's gotten so bad that I've taken to making out with marble statues in the middle of Munich in the middle of the night. Elsa, you know how in love with my wife I am. Oh, Rolf, I'm a horrible person. No, 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 please. Oh, no, Rolf. Oh, God, I have something to show you. It is a letter from India. It's from Klaus. You remember Klaus? From the hospital. Anyway, he and I have become pen pals, and, uh, well, he and Ton, they are staying at an ashram somewhere. So she's okay. Uh, there's a return address if you'd like to write to her. Or, and why don't you just go? What are you doing standing around here? <laughs> Rolf, um, please give my love to Ton. And you will never mention what happened here tonight, ever, okay? Good night. Uh, goodbye. Oof. As nights pass and days go by, I miss only you all the time. Miss me,
India's hot. <laughs> to become one with the planet, one must become a tree. <laughs> Who's one? Mm. Yeah. Oh, I get it. When you fold it, his chin becomes a butt. <laughs> That's funny. Guilty pleasure? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. This, this, this isn't mine. Oh, Ton. Klaus, your secret is safe with me. Go gently with yourself, my gentle friend. And look, flour from the market for homemade chapatis. Delicious. <laughs> So, uh, Ton, how are you sleeping these days, you know, up there on the roof? My five zillion star hotel? I sleep like a lamb in pasture. Well, still, all in all, it can't be very safe. You know, there's scorpions everywhere. And it rains. A lot. And, um, and there's room, you know. Inside. <laughs> Where in that tiny cot? Yes. Klaus. Oh, no, no, I'd, uh, I'd sleep on the floor, you know, with a, with a mat and a, and a blanket. <laughs> Klaus, how can I make you understand what I mean when I say I absolutely adore you? And I'm going to keep sleeping on the roof. In any case, it will soon be time for me to be pressing on. Why, why do you have to press on? Oh, it, it's beautiful here, and, and we're eating well. And, and growing wiser every day, just living, just being, aren't we? You know that woman who gave me her walking stick? She called me Smiling Step. She knew, I think, that my journey would be long, but joyful. And there is this inner joy within me that wants me to keep going forward. If I were to find a true master, I have to climb higher into the Himalayas. Smiling Step. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have to finish shopping. So, uh, if you're hungry, have some sprouts. Oh, I will, because I love these. Um... <sighs> oh, Ton, you forgot your book. You... <laughs> if it wasn't for you in life, where would I have run? Maybe to a monastery. I can do better than that. If it wasn't for sprouts in life, I would have gone to the moon. Sitting there miserable like a dog without bones. No. If it wasn't for sprouts in life, I would have been so lonesome. Think of the sunflower without the shining sun. If it wasn't for sprouts in life, oh, where would I have run? Maybe to a monastery, but there I would be so lonely. Like a monk without a nun. Monastery, but there 
where I would be so lonely like a monk. Without a nun. Dr. Reinhardt? Hello, Klaus. Where did you, how did you? Find you, the usual way. An airplane, a bus, a water buffalo, my own two legs. I travel equipped with three things that have proven sufficient. My passport, a handful of traveler's checks, and this letter that you sent to Elsa. Oh, um. Did you not think that she would show it to me? Well, I, I, and did you not think that I would make note of the return address that you so dutifully scrawled on the envelope? But you weren't there. I showed her picture at every ashram and bank and post office between here and Delhi. Well, um, Where is she? Who? My wife. Oh. Oh, she's not here. She's, uh, she's out gathering food for our supper. So she does live here? Yes. With you? Yes. With you? Yes, uh. <laughs> We're both on the same spiritual path, you know. We met. I helped her. At, uh, saved her, actually, from a particularly dangerous situation, and she was very grateful. Go on. And I think, no, I know that she does not want to go back to Germany with you, Doctor, if that is what you are assuming. That is none of your business. No, 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 it is my business because I'm in love with her. And she you. Yes? <laughs> she adores me. She told me so. I don't believe it. Oh, it's like a bad dream. Oh, what a fool I've been to have gone on this exhausting, idiotic, wild goose chase. Do me a favor, Klaus. Tell Tan I was here. Show this to her. It'll prove what inspired my visit. I'll be back in Munich. Oh, Klaus. I'm back. Oh, so quickly. Hi. <laughs> hey, what's this? Your letter to Elsa from Germany? How did this get here? Uh, Rolf. Rolf brought it. Rolf? Here? When? Oh, just now. Well, where is he? No, 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 he left. I, I sent him away. What? Okay, he left. He, uh, he was pretty angry. But why? Because we're living together. That's ridiculous! Did you tell him the truth that I sleep on the roof and you're here temporarily until you find your own hut? I told him the truth. I told him I was in love with you, Tan. Klaus. You great big idiot. I know. Why did you do such a thing? Because it's the truth. Because it's... It's pure. It's real. And because... Because I was afraid. I was afraid that if I didn't tell him I was in love with you, he was going to take you away, and I would never see you again. Klaus, didn't I just tell you that I absolutely adore you? But Rolf is my husband, and I'm in love with him! I see. I see that. <laughs> Which way did he go, Klaus? That way. No, wait. That way. to the bus depot? Ah, straight ahead. That's impossible. Follow the traffic circle two quarters round, make a hard left at the hotel, and go two more blocks. Bless you. Can't miss 
One ticket to the airport, please. <clears throat> that. 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 On time. Airport? I need to catch him. Please. Sorry, miss. Too late. That was our last one today. I missed him. I just missed him. He must have been so angry with me. And for no good reason. A silly, foolish misunderstanding. I didn't get a chance to explain. Or tell him how much, how much I love him. Happy birthday, darling. Happy birthday. I never left India. Something stopped me. It was you. I needed to see you. I've been searching for you for two days. I realized what a fool I've been. Still am. Fool in love, Tan. So I never left India. You can be a very silly man, Dr. Reinhardt. Oh. I just needed to see you and to hold you. I've been completely miserable without you, Tan. It's as simple as that. You sweet, adorable man. What now? I don't care. Just as long as we're together. But your work, the new children's wing, you've been dreaming of that for years. Yes, it opens the day after tomorrow. You would love to be there. No. It couldn't be less important to me now, Tan. My life's work is loving you. Lead on and I will follow. But you're a doctor. Of course I'm a doctor. I'm also a dentist, remember? I mean, it's your life, your passion, your calling. I am on a different path now, Ton. This is my path, Rolf. Y yes. So what do we do now? Carry on. How? Where? I'm continuing my journey up the Himalayas, and you, you're going back to Munich. So you couldn't come with me? No, my love. We both know this is just the truth. When will I see you again? Someday, I hope. I will love you always and forever, Tom. And I will love you forever and always. The time we spend together, I will always treasure. Do not forget our memory, for love is the one. Who 
says the world is ephemeral when we are together it's eternal dream and life merge in unison when our souls are
once upon a time, a true peace lover wandered around the many worlds in search of eternal happiness. She walked over the face of the earth, the suns, the moons, and the clouds. At last she found that it was all the while hidden in her very heart. Then she sat down and was about to enjoy her newfound bliss. But suddenly she looked down and saw Papa's knees were still groveling in darkness. For they were searching for happiness without, just like her before, peering over millions of ages. And soon the firmament was studded with glittering teeth. Which are the stars today? They are to shine in the day and to rest us in the night to go to sleep. For all these seekers, the stars are. I cried at the end, and I loved it. And the production value is incredible. The last number was beautiful, and I was in tears. I felt a catharsis with the character, and that was a wonderful moment. At last she found that it was all the while in her very heart. I've had
I've had the honor and privilege of meeting the Supreme Master, and she is real. There are a lot of people in the world who speak like she does, but they don't mean it. She means it. She is so full of love and generosity and kindness and understanding. I wish I could be half as good, just half. It's nice that the songs were, the words of the poems were put into songs, so that made it extra special. I liked it because it was a nice love story. The ending wasn't what I expected. It was very, very well done. It's not the real love gave a message of world peace and just to, to be happy and to, to love each other. Because it was a true story, I thought it made it that much better. Uh, Supreme Master Cheng Hai, I really enjoyed the musical and uh, the poems and everything, and uh, thank you for everything uh, you're doing. Hi, I'm Kirill Kulish. I'm Trent Koalik. Happy, Happy fifth, fifth anniversary, anniversary to Supreme Master Television. Television. It's been really fun. It's been a really um, interesting, full experience. Uh, it's been a joy. I've got to finally work with Katie Hoffman after 20 years of knowing each other. It's an incredible cast, and um, it's a very inspiring story. Congratulations. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of this event, and thank you for having me. I would be thrilled if Master Ching Hai was there. Hopefully we're creating something that she's happy with, proud of. Hi, I'm Katie Huffman and I am here on Supreme Master Television. Happy fifth anniversary. I would love to share these words with Supreme Master Xing Hai. Bless you, lady, for writing a property like this and sharing it with the world and allowing us to compose music to your poems. And this has been such a treat to do this, and I just hope it really goes to the moon, this whole idea. Hi, I'm Don Pippen. You're watching Supreme Master Television. Be veg, go green to save the planet.